of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 18. I'll read that scripture. I have several scriptures, but I'm going to read that scripture to begin with. And the book of Psalms says, chapter 18, 34, excuse me, chapter 34 and verse 18, it says, The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. Of a contrite spirit. Oh, Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, today for your presence that's in this place, God. We thank you for the work that you want to do. We thank you, God, now that you have used me and you have desired to use me as a vessel to bring the word of God, that it would encourage someone's heart on the day. God, we just thankful for all that you are going to do and how you're going to manifest your glory in our midst, God. We humble ourselves before your presence this evening, Lord. And we just bless your holy name. Come now, Lord, and take your liberty in this place. Let the word of God be anointed and the lips of the man that presents the word also be anointed to bring the word. And that the ears will hear the word and receive the word and walk therein. For this I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm going to speak with you for just a second on this subject. You may be seated. I'm sorry. I thought I said that. You... On the subject for just a second, on the other side of broken. On the other side of broken. Another scripture I want to mention to you is Psalm 51 and 17. And it says, the sacrifice of, a God, of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart that I will not despise. And when you look at the concordance or when you look at the uh, commentary on that particular scripture, is actually David is actually talking about... When you get to a point that you have a contract heart that you are repenting about sin. And when you want to turn away from the things that you've done that are classified as things that are wrong. Things that will take you away from God. And that portion of scripture, David is saying, I have problems and I have issues, but what I have more than problems and issues, I found God to be a person that when you turn to him, he can't turn away from you. Somebody needs to know that when you turn to God, God is always going to be there waiting on you. He's drawing you by his love. And so David is beginning to lay out a foundation here for the ones who have walked away from God, who have, who have done things in their walk with God, who have severed the relationship with God, sort of speaking. David said, when you get to that point and you realize where you are, don't worry about it. Because if your heart is broken toward the Lord, all you have to do is call out to him, turn around. To face God with whatever it is that's in you, and God will bring you out. Somebody say, God will. God will bring me out. Bring me out. I looked at the scripture, and there's another place in the scripture that I wanted. I think this mic is gone. I, I wanted it, and there's another place, and maybe I turned it off. No, Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now you and I both can hear me. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch this scripture and then I'm going to go away from it and then I may touch it again, but I'm going to mostly paraphrase the things that are going on in this portion of the scripture for the sake of time. In the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 1 through 12, I'll go ahead and read some of this to you and it may not get all of it. And they came over onto the other side. And we're talking about a broken and a contract heart. Yes. We're talking about brokenness before the Lord. Uh -huh. And the scripture says he came to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes. And he was come out of the ship and immediately met him out of the tombs of man with an unclean spirit. And he, and he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could tame him and no one could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains and the chains he had been plucked asunder by him and the feathers broken in pieces and neither could any man tame him. And I'm going to go ahead and get away from that because I want to go ahead and paint the picture for you. There was this man that was bound by demons that was living on the other side and the 
Bible makes it clear that he went into the country of the Gadarenes. The reason God and the scripture lays it out the way it is because he wants us to know that where God won't go for the life of somebody that he already created. God will go wherever he has to go. God will do whatever he has to do. God will turn over anything and move anything for a soul that he created. I'm going to tell somebody today. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you've been. If you have a broken heart, and it's after the Lord. God is coming to where you are. This man, according to the Bible, was in the tombs. The scripture said he made his living in the tombs. He couldn't get away from the tombs. I don't know anyone in this world that would desire to live among dead folk. But this man had his living there. The Bible says that he was bound by demons uh, and the demons uh, drove him into the place uh, where he lived in the tombs uh, and he stayed there. And the Bible also said that this man, let me show you the kind of problems that this man had. Because, you know, sometimes we look at our lives and we determine in our minds what God can and what God cannot do because of what we've been through or what we're going through. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you've been through. God still can do anything. But the man... Bible says lived in the tombs and the man said he was bound with spirits the next part of that scripture said when Jesus came over to the other side and he walked upon the seashore the man ran to him and he fell down before him and began to worship him that was his opportunity I need to tell somebody that the Bible says that Jesus Christ inhabits the praise of the people of God and I want to let you know that when God shows up to inhabit the praise of the people he's not coming for the ones who's got it all right he's coming to transact business with the ones who's got it all wrong God wants to bring a deliverance to somebody today. Come on, somebody. So the man lived in the tombs. He lived in the tombs. We don't know whether his friends were happy about the fact that he went to the tombs. We don't know whether his friends ever tried to visit him in the tombs. But I want to paint a picture of what Jesus had to do to get there. The Bible says in the preceding chapter, chapter five, four, I believe it was, that Jesus was on a ship. And when he was on the ship, there came a storm. Jesus was in the bow of the ship, taking a nap. And the storm began to be raging. The Bible says in the water and wind made the water overtake the ship. And the Bible says that the disciples uh, were on the ship. The Lord had already put some stuff in them uh, that would help them to over things uh, that they didn't know were coming. Uh, somebody needs to know you're sitting down on something uh, that God gave you uh, that'll get you through your situation. Uh, all you got to do is tap into it uh, and begin to live. Uh, and begin to live. But the Bible says... Uh, when the water began to overtake the ship, the disciples got up and they got antsy. They went down and they shook the Lord and said, Jesus, Master, don't you care about your people? Your people are going through something right now. We're about to be overtaken by the wind and the rain and the water that's coming into the ship. And the Bible says Jesus got up and he went up to the top of the ship and he looked at the wind and he looked at the storm and he said, peace. <laughs> Listen, peace. <laughs> you may be broken today. Your life may be shattered. But when the Holy Ghost shows up here and begins to manifest his glory, all he has to do is say peace. 
You don't have the right to touch them because they belong to me. They're born again of water and the spirit. I brought them out from a land of darkness into the marvelous light. And I'm going to protect them. Hallelujah. 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 Morning. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The Lord turned and looked at the disciples and said, Where in the world was your faith? Why can't we tap in to the faith and the power of God that's moving in us that will propel us to step over our obstacles and live for God? Yeah. And be the vessel that God called us to be. Hallelujah. When I begin to look at the scripture and think about what is going on, I came across something that to me was very interesting. And it's something called Kenzikai. Kenzikai is an art. It's an art form of taking things that are broken, pieces of ceramic, pieces of, of vase, all of those type things. And Kensuke, what it does, it's a Japanese culture. What it does, it takes the cracks that are in the broken vessels and it fills the cracks with gold and with brass and with silver. The idea from Kensuke is that what I can take uh, that someone thinks is trash, uh, I can make it uh, like it's better than it ever was. Uh, I can make it uh, worth something. Uh, but I want to tell somebody, uh, ain't nothing like uh, the Holy Ghost uh, and what God uh, wants to do. the sinner. Yes, but God also loves his church. Yes, I begin to think about how often the people of the household of faith go from day to day, from Sunday to Sunday, from Wednesday to Wednesday, to Bible study and come in the presence of God. And when God begins to manifest his glory, they come to an altar they get a touch like a goose bump, and they leave, and they take back the brokenness that they brought to the altar. They never give it to God, and God's standing here wondering if you paid all of this trouble to come into my presence, why not give it to me? Yeah. Yeah. And so I begin to think about all of the people who look just right. 
brother, would you come? Would you come? I asked the brother to come and help me. And I'm going to be timed. We're running out of time. You can almost, you can almost run and be just bright. But it's too late you're here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen. Watch this. This is what the Lord showed me. On the outside, it's just right. On the outside, it's pristine. Just like Kentucky, when they redo the ceramics, they're pretty. They even are increased in value. And what we do in the church of the living God is we put on these nice clothes. Because the clothes hide the scars. I'm trying to help somebody. I want to help somebody. The scars are hidden by the outfit. And the scars are hidden by the smile. And the scars are hidden by the firm handshake. And the handshake is followed by the voice that says, Praise the Lord, brother and sister. I'm all right today. I'm doing all right today. But under all of this beauty, it's scars, it's wounds, it's rejection, it's anxiety, it's fear, it's all the things that we name that can be our tomb. And we're living in a tomb. And we're born again in the church and out of the church and living in a tomb. And the Lord says, much better than Kenzie guy is what I can do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In the book of Matthew, the Bible says that Jesus, talking about a broken heart, that Jesus was drawn to a group of people. Somebody hear me because, see, we have our minds so acclimated to the only person that God wants to help are the ones that are lost. Mm -hmm. But if God put a gift in you, you got to get rid of some of that brokenness. Amen. If God put a gift in you, in order for it to reach its potential, there's going to have to be a point when the glory of God is manifest in this place. That you're going to bring your problem and live at the altar. Because in the altar they lift their hands. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In the altar they may speak in tongues. In the altar they may run and shout. But brokenness is hidden behind the clothes and in the heart. I want you to know today that it's not God's will for us to be dominated in fear. It's not God's will for us to be dominated in anger. It's not God's will for us to be dominated in anxiety. It's not God's will for us to have these problems, hold on to these problems, and not let go of these problems. God said, quit living in the tomb. Now. The Bible says 
The light helps you believe that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh, and it dwelt among the people of God, and the people of God looked upon the word, and they comprehended it not, and they beheld the glory as if the only begotten of the Father. Revelation, Revelation helps you to understand that God said that after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. power. Let me ask somebody something. What you going to do with all that power? Living in the tomb. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. What you going to do with all that power? Among the dead folks. Jesus. The power is not for you to sit on. All right now. The power is for you to use. <laughs> I think I'm ready to see some people use some power. The power is for us to use. And God said, for all of those that He desired, He gave a specific gift. How are we going to use the gift if we're living in the tomb? And God said, the only reason you're staying in the tomb is because you don't want others to know just how broken you are. But I'm talking to somebody today. I stopped by to tell you, but there's life on the other side of broken. If you get enough courage in your heart, and you begin to walk in this place. And when God begins to manifest his glory, you will lift up both hands and you will run to the altar and call before the Lord. God, will deliver you. We can be all that God wants us to be. But not in, the tomb. not in the tomb. The tomb is made for those that are dead. And let me show you this. In the beginning scripture, we talked about a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And I also mentioned to you that God loves all of his people. You know why? Because we're a part of him. The Bible says we were created in his likeness and in his image. See, we talked about yesterday in the men's meeting how God wants to engage our thinking. And if we ever get our thinking right, All right. we can begin to believe that there's more for us than what we are in now. Yeah. We're not living in our potential. We can start to believe that we are greater. Yeah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. engaged and our hearts engaged uh, helps us to know what to put our hands to uh, our hands need to be lifted high uh, and we need to be exalting the king of kings uh, and the lord of lords uh, because he's showing us uh, that there is life uh, on the other side of broken uh, you don't have to live uh, where you've been living uh, all your life But it's gonna take, it's gonna take what the man in the tomb had. He was tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired. You gotta look deep in yourself. Somebody listen to me. You gotta look deep in yourself. And you gotta go into that mirror in the bathroom or in the hallway and you gotta ask yourself, Am I there yet? Am I in the place where God called me to be? Some of the people that are sitting here have had people to prophesy on their lives about things that they, God wanted them to do in the kingdom. Uh -huh. And they look in the mirror 
And as the Bible says, we behold our fixed face in the mirror and then we turn around and we forget what type of image it was. We got to stay focused. We got to stay focused. We got to realize that if God called us, that he's going to make a way from us. And we got to stop running away from our calling and running back to the tomb. The tomb may be safety, but it's not where God wants you to be. God wants you to live victoriously on the other side of brokenness. You gotta have enough courage to do what the man in the tomb. Let me show you something about the man in the tomb. The man in the tomb, his name was never mentioned. That's right. I look at that scripture and say, Lord, with all of this significance about this man, with all of this parallel that we can draw from this man into our life. Why doesn't he have a name? You know what the Lord said? Because that man represents all of humanity. Jesus! Everyone at one time or another lives in a tomb. It's the thought that comes to your mind that you can't shake. That begins to dominate your thinking. And you say, Lord... How can I do something for you and I can't even focus from one minute to another? It's the anxiety that you get when you're sitting at home alone. Oh, we control it in a crowd. We control it when we come to Sunday morning mass. Oh, we control it in Bible study. But at home, the tomb is waiting. The tomb is waiting. And that problem that you left at home is still at home. And the only thing that will break the cycle is when God shows up in the middle of praise and worship. He's not coming just because of praise and worship. He's coming to transact business. He's stepping off of a ship and onto a shore. And he's saying, who wants to be healed? Who wants to be whole? Who wants to be set free? Who who wants to walk in victory? Yeah. I said, if they'll do it, if they'll mean it in their heart. Yes. You know the man in the tomb didn't have anywhere else to turn to. Oh, he couldn't just go back home. He didn't have a home. He couldn't call a neighbor. The Bible says his name didn't have to do with it. Let me show you a picture of what God wants to do. At the end of the entire experience with the man in the tomb, the Bible says that the demons were gone. That's your brokenness. That's your splinterness. That's the things that you hold on to. That's the things that you can't let go of. The Bible says all of those things were gone. And when the people that were there, that's another thing about God, God always brings a crowd. You wonder why you're in the church? Because when God works, he wants other people to see it. That's right. Yeah. God ain't healing nobody undercover. God ain't healing nobody undercover. When God do something, he wants witnesses. Yeah. And he wanted to be at, a, at an amount and a level that everybody will say, the magnificent work of God. Yeah. And begin to lift your hands and magnify the King of Kings. And so the man got totally delivered. And here's the picture. When the people heard about it, yes. There's always going to be one to run and tell you. That's right. That's right. We can catch that one before you get out the building. Lord, have mercy. What we'll do to that one? Pray for him. Amen. Somebody went and told him, said, look, you just, you, you, you just need to go to the tomb. I ain't going out there. I ain't lost nothing in the tomb. <laughs> I ain't lost a thing in that tomb. Y'all go all you want to, be as nosy as you want to, and something get a hold of you, don't not come to me. I don't have nothing in that tomb. No, I 
need you to come. You got to see this. This is a man that we banished from the town. We told him never to come back again. He had too many problems and we didn't have any solutions. Because they didn't know God either. The Bible says the Gadarenes was a place that of the Gentile nation, it was one of the first times that the Lord would begin to take a part of his gospel into that nation. He's making a statement. I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. I'll calm the raging sea. I'll move the mountain. I'll stop time. If you worship me, if you give it to me, I'll take it from you. And the Bible says that when they came back, we're getting ready to close. When they came back, the pigs were already in the water drowned. The Bible says, it's not the Bible, but somebody says that's the first time they ever know anything about devil ham. And, and it was able to get, because the pigs were <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought somebody needed that. I just can't. Uh, God bless you, whoever it was that needed it. <laughs> the Bible says when they got back to the sit to the place where the man was at in the tomb, they found the man. Listen, the man had a legion of demons. You think you got problems? All right now. All right. All right. Look at what God will do. Yes. You think you got problems and you're one of God's elect. Uh-huh. What won't God do for you? Amen. Amen. And when they got back, they found the man clothed. Yes, hallelujah. It's a good thing that we're clothed. We all need to aspire to that. We're going to all, from this point on, if you ain't been doing it, we're going to start wearing some clothes. <laughs> That's a good thing. Put that on the list, circle it, and underline it twice. We need to all put on clothes. We need to be dressed appropriately no matter where you go. Amen. The man was clothed. Yeah. And here's the next part. The man was in his right. Hallelujah. If God won't bring you out, it ain't nothing gonna bring you out. It ain't nothing like the power of the Holy Ghost working in your life and bringing you from the tomb to the other side of broken. Hallelujah. God's gonna bring somebody out today. Oh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Somebody lift your hands and begin to worship him. Come on, come on, come on, lift your hands. Come on. Stand to your feet, everybody, all over the place. Pastor, come.